This is uh, what I'm going to cover in the next 20 minutes, distribution and abundance of, of cetaceans in Haida Gwaii. I'll talk a bit about killer whales in particular, uh, humpback whales in particular, and then, uh, and then briefly about uh, why I think, at least, Haida Gwaii is, is such an important part of the world, and I, and I mean that literally, the world, for, uh, for whales in general. This is the boat that Kathy and I went across to the Charlottes uh, on for the first time in, in uh, 1992. We uh, had a contract with, uh, with the new Guayhanas uh, administration at that time to, uh, do, to work on a biological inventory of uh, cetaceans, that's whales, dolphins, and porpoises, um, in, uh, in the Guayhanas area. This, uh, this map shows a, um, a, uh, all of the, the sightings in the so-called British Columbia Cetacean Sightings Network. This is a, a program that operates here from the aquarium in collaboration with Fisheries and Oceans, and Caitlin Birdsell will be talking more about this in a few minutes. But I just wanted to, to put this up to give you a sense of the, uh, of the importance, if you like, the distribution of whales of all species around Haida Gwaii. Now, you might, looking at this map, you might see that there are even more sightings around Vancouver Island. These, these, uh, every one of these dots represents a report of a, of a sighting of a whale, uh, of a group of whales, usually. And, uh, and really, the dots reflect where the whales go to, to a considerable extent, we hope, and they also reflect where people go. And you know that there's a lot of boats on the water around Vancouver Island. We're, we're almost bound to hear about whales uh, in our part of the world, uh, or at least in this lower British Columbian part of the world. Um, up in Haida Gwaii, that's not the case. And, uh, and we think that this distribution evidenced in this picture is, is, is quite phenomenal, really. It's an incredibly rich place. Um, in many ways, uh, incredibly rich marine environment and, uh, and very uh, rich in, in cetaceans in general. First, I'll, I'll do a little biology 101, if you like, on, on killer whales or orcas. They belong to the dolphin family. The uh, males grow to about nine, nine meters. They're substantially larger than females, probably twice the mass. Females are about seven meters. This is probably the best place in the world, um, our, our coast and, the, and southeast Alaska and northern Washington states, really the best place in the world to, to uh, well, the most convenient place, uh, at least to see the species. So this, the bottom of the skull of, uh, of, a, of a killer whale and, uh, and the teeth. And these teeth are really um, uh, quite formidable, as you can see. Um, but you notice that they're not actually particularly sharp. Um, you know, killer whales do hunt a, an astonishing variety of prey, but I put this up partly to show that they, uh, that, you know, in my opinion at least, they do that largely by stealth and cooperation and, and strategy as opposed to, to by brute force. They're, they're smaller than a lot of the species that they, that they attack and eat. This is um, the, uh, the, the sightings in the, uh, in the Cetacean Sightings Network database of killer whales uh, around Haida Gwaii. And you can see down in the uh, South Moresby area, the east side particularly, where there's much more um, observer effort, if you like, than the west side, there's a very high abundance of this species. And then uh, up in the northwest corner, um, around Langara Island in particular, a small island that's completely obscured by dots in this map, and, uh, and actually happened to be the first place that I ever went. I hitched a ride on a Coast Guard helicopter over there when I was about 20. Um, and managed to get lost and stumbled around on Langara for a couple of days in the fog. And uh, anyway, fortunately, it's obscured by dots here because it is a very rich area, um, and uh, uh, particularly for killer whales. So there are three, three um, varieties of cultures, as I like to refer to them, and I think it's a very valid term, of killer whales off our coast and off, the, uh, and off Haida Gwaii in particular. Um, the first of these are the so-called resident killer whales. These are, are fish eaters. Uh, they live in incredibly stable groups called matrilines. These are family groups. And a matriline consists of an old female, uh, her and all of her offspring, all of her lineage. So these would be her adult sons, adult daughters, uh, grandchildren, sometimes great-grandchildren. Males don't live as long as females, so when you see an adult male in these groups, it's, it's almost always tagging along with its mother. Uh, resident killer whales, as I mentioned, are fish eaters. They're particularly fond of salmon and, and, uh, and extremely fond of this species, the, the um, Chinook salmon, or king salmon as they call them in the States. Now, the numbers of killer whales in any given area are, are relatively small compared to most species that we're familiar with. These are, these are apex predators, if you like. They're top of the food chain, and, uh, and the environment can't really support great numbers of them. 
I think if you'd put, in fact, I know if you'd put these numbers up 25 years ago, fishermen, 30 years ago, fishermen wouldn't have believed um, that there were so few killer whales because they're relatively conspicuous and they're not, it's not uncommon to see them. But the absolute numbers are small. We have about 85 down around in, in this part of British Columbia, northern Washington state, 215 um, that stretch from, say, Campbell River to, uh, to, the, uh, to southeast Alaska, to the Alaska border. These whales do respect borders, as you can see. And, and more as you go further up into Alaska. The next uh, uh, variety or culture, if you like, of killer whales are the so-called uh, uh, transients. These animals are, uh, are, are, marine, are marine mammal eaters primarily. They, 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 eat, they take warm-blooded prey, a few seabirds, um, but almost uh, entirely uh, marine mammals. And as far as we know, no fish at all. The, talking about transient killer whales always gives me an excuse to, and an opportunity, if you like, to run through some of the other species of marine mammals on our coast because they're really all food for transients. So um, we'll, as I go on here, I'll be, uh, I'll be trying to give them the respect they deserve, but I do tend to <laughs> inevitably think of them as, as killer whale food. Tra uh, stellar sea lions, uh, a large, large <laughs> a package, a difficult um, uh, prey for killer whales. These uh, male and stellar sea lions get to be about a ton. Uh, they're very common in, uh, in much of our coast and strangely um, much less common as you go further west in Alaska. In fact, there's a, a crisis in western Alaska with a massive decline of stellar sea lions. I don't quite understand why the two areas are so different. This, this picture was taken by Peter Alesiak of a, of a transient killer whale attacking a large uh, male stellar. You know, it gives you a sense of the relative size of the two animals. Um, the killer whales are larger, but not all that much. Um, stellars have very formidable teeth, and uh, t uh, killing one uh, is a very long process, usually, if, if it's a large adult male in any case. And stellars have a very um, uh, healthy respect for killer whales on the whole, um, as you can imagine. They do sometimes go into the water when killer whales pass a haul out, but it's usually, it's only very tight groups, usually young males, um, dosed up on testosterone, and we all know what young males on testosterone are like. They, they, uh, <laughs> they take their chances. Um, harbor seals, a big part of the diet of transient killer whales. Um, uh, in fact, the, really the biggest, uh, as far as we know, on a numerical basis. Lots of uh, harbor, se harbor seals are, are taken by transients. These, these animals are very common uh, throughout ha Haida Gwaii, and in fact, all the way along the mainland coast of British Columbia as well. This is a picture that was sent to me by Corita Bergman from, um, from Haida Gwaii uh, recently. It's a fabulous photograph. I, I, I looked at it very carefully to make sure it was photo not photoshopped, and I think it's real. <laughs> and it shows a transient killer whale breaching near a harbor seal haul out. In fact, if you look carefully, you can see harbor seals against the rocks in the background. Sometimes, har sometimes killer whales do this, um, transients, they'll breach next to a harbor seal haul out, particularly if they're young pups. And some of the pups end up going into the water. You can see their little brains short circuiting. They're not sure what they're supposed to do when a predator shows up. If it's, for some predators, bears or wolves, it makes sense to go into the water. For others, like killer whales, it doesn't. And, uh, and when they're very young, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're hardwired and they sometimes actually go into the water and are taken by the killer whales. Gray whales um, uh, are also taken by killer whales. Um, I've been working on a project in Alaska for a number of years. These are entrails from a gray whale with a happy little killer whale playing, playing amongst them. Gray whales do um, cross, uh, they're, they're thought of as a very coastal species. They hug the coast as they migrate, very famous migration all the way from uh, Southern California and Mexico every year up to, uh, up through, across the Bering Sea and to the, into the Chukchi Sea um, uh, in, the, uh, in the, both the U.S. and, and uh, Russian Arctic. Um, and uh, they hug the, the coastline most of the way, but they, most of the animals uh, do cross over Hecate Strait and go up the east side of Haida Gwaii, sometimes the west side, mostly the east side, and, um, and then uh, cross over into, into Alaska and start hugging the coast the rest of the way um, up to the Bering Sea. Elephant seals, we don't see these very, com very commonly in British Columbia. Um, this is a species that was almost wiped out um, in the activities that Kathy was talking about and now fortunately beginning to, uh, to recover. Uh, and they, they are part of the prey of killer whales. These are seen not uncommonly in the South Moresby area again on the east side. Dull porpoises, the little black and white uh, killer whale look-alike, um, uh, sort of two meter long porpoises that are fairly common in British Columbia. This is a, one of the first killer whale pictures I ever took actually, if I just didn't have time to get the camera up to my eye. And that's a dull porpoise on the water in front of it.